And hello. Hello everyone. Welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion on turbulence modeling. So before we start, the, uh, we were discussing on uh, Smogorinsky dynamic model. So we are talking about how we want to use uh, separate, separate things up into uh, large eddies, medium eddies, and small eddies, so-called, using double filtering or test filtering. So we filter the equations once to get our you know, standard LES model. And then we filter again using a test filter or the second filter. So we we filter in a sec we filter a second time to get our medium eddies so called, and we use the interaction between large and medium eddies using this uh, filtered uh, uh, kinematic viscosity the second time uh, to kind of guess the coefficient for the um, kinematic viscosity uh, I mean the turbulent kinematic viscosity or subgrid kinem turbulent kinematic viscosity inside the small eddies so we before I start uh, talking about filtering in more math terms so we just want to cover some preliminary stuff first if you're already very familiar with this you can skip but uh, yeah I know I said in the last video to come and skip to the next video but it looks like you gotta skip it down a little bit more fast forward a little bit more to find the part where I start talking about um, the actual filtering now I just want to be clear on what this SIJ is talking about why the notation like this is used this Einstein notation is used this tensor notation and because some people use vector notation like that like this okay and then it can be a bit confusing for let's say a first timer Okay, but if you're familiar, just go on, skip ahead. If not, I'll just keep talking, all right? So uh, for now, yes, I want to uh, talk about how this Einstein notation works, how this describes the tensors uh, that, are, that are present over here, this uh, gradient of the vector. So this del u, i, del x, j is structured like this. So i is representing the column, uh, the the row number, I think, yeah. Yeah, so I represents the row number, and then J represents the column number. And U1 uh, corresponds to the uh, X velocity, U2 to the Y velocity, U3 to the Z velocity. And X1, X2, and X3 are the X1 and Z uh, directions, respectively. So let's say we have the first let's say i equals 1 j equals 1 so i equals 1 j equals 1 actually corresponds to the first row first column which is this element here so u1 is actually the ux or vx the x velocity x1 is actually the uh, x direction now we can put this to the test for let's say other elements as well let's say u equals to 2 uh, j equals to 3 for example so u2 is the y velocity u2 is the y velocity uh, x3 is the z direction so u2 is column 2 column 2 x, uh, i equals to 2 represents column 2 j equals to 3 represents uh, row 3 wait no I equals to 2 represents row 2, row 2, second row. J equals to 3 represents column 3. So U2 is Vy, X3 is Z. So how this whole thing works is that, uh, let's say you have this, uh, okay, you have this, okay, you have this equals to nabla U vector. This is actually equal, and of course you transpose it, you just switch the i and j, of course. Um, you transpose it and you kind of switch the i and j. Okay, so this this uh, this actually uh, represents the following. That means that the element in, okay, how, how this notation works is that the element in row i column j is del u i del x j 
okay so that's how this actually works for this tensor so for example I uh, told you already um, before let's say i equals to 2 that is the second row j equals 3 means the third column so u2 x3 will be present there over here let's say u equals to 3 uh, i equals to 3 j equals to 3 and then the element there is uh, there by del u3 del x3 so that is the last one here so hopefully yeah one last example before i go let's say i equals to 1 x equals to 3 so i equals to 1 goes for uh, represents the first row that means it's u1 and then x equals to 3 uh, j equals to 3 uh, corresponds to you know x3 so the the element in uh, row 1 column 3 will be del, del by del u del, del u del x3 del u1 del x3 which is del in the the gradient with respect to the no, partial derivative res with respect to the z direction uh, of the x velocity so yeah so if we check the element in row 1 column 3 so this is row 1 so this is row 1 column 1 row 2 row 1 column 2 row 1 column 3 this is the element over here so this is how the vector notation works so if you're talking about this uh, rate of strain tensor same idea okay same idea so you have two parts right two parts you have this vector i mean this this element and this element so let's say sij sij of uh, i equals to one j equals to three so that is row one column three again so row one is here row one is here row one uh, row one column three is here so you have a del by del z of vx and then you have the indices switched for the transpose so you have instead of uh, u1 uh, x3 you have x3 and u1 so no yeah u u1 and x3 you have u3 and x1 so u3 is the z direction velocity x1 is of course just x so uh, sij when you sum them up together it will just be this so you have this one plus this one and then if you just compress that notation you'll get something like this and this is what you get if you were say another example if i equals to one j equals to one so that's the element and this is how you would read this uh, tensor notation so no matter how you write it whether it's in this uh, tensor notation or in this vector notation they mean pretty much the same thing you just have to be very clear on that hopefully that, that clarifies any doubts i know i'm trying to go through this the the explanation pretty quickly as fast as i can because uh, most of you should be rather familiar with the notation already but just in case you aren't here here's a you know, short explanation so okay now that you have this, we can take a look at the Navier-Stokes equation here. Okay. We can take a look into the Navier-Stokes equation here and take a look more at this term. Okay, so uh, okay, there, there's more there's more stuff to anyway to this tensor notation. Uh, there's more stuff to it. You can go and visit the Wikipedia page, uh, whatever. Uh, but uh, you can just search inf uh, infinitesimal strain tensor on the Wikipedia page. You'll be able to see a little bit more detail, but I'm not going to go into that there. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to make sense of this. All right, how do we make sense of this uh, notation here? I mean, the, the, the idea is basically the same as this. So you, you have in the J column, for example, you have in the, the j column all right right let me slow down okay so yeah we said earlier that this was the two times the rate of strain tensor this one we can kind of we roughly know how to uh, guess it already it's probably this one is confusing um yeah how do we make sense of this how does it how does it write uh, write 
kind of get right, written out in the three Navier-Stokes equations. Because you don't have an I and J thing here, and then you're trying to differentiate this whole uh, thing inside this uh, column, okay? Inside this tensor, rather. So how do you kind of make sense of it? And how can we say, you know, if you take a look at, if you compare these two equations directly, you see this, uh, the di uh, divergence, uh, nabla square of nu, or del square nu, and then you see this term here, right? Why did one term just go on to disappear? Yeah, so if you were to compare these two terms, uh, you'd have this here, supposedly equals to, okay, it's supposedly equal to, blah, blah, square u. Okay, so this is what we usually find in our Navier-Stokes equation. So this is something we're not that familiar with. Um, this is something we're more familiar with. And what is this? Actually, we kind of, it's very easy to write out. So it is nabla square of u x, nabla square of u y, nabla square of u z. Okay, so this is a three row, one column vector. So one vector for each, you know, each direction in the x, y, and z. So how does this term reduce this into this? Okay, because uh, this one looks like a tensor, but this one looks like a vector. Okay, how do we know? Okay, so in this case, del by del xj is actually, you know, uh, Einstein notation of a summation. So the, the summation is as follows, del by del xj equals to del by del x plus del by del y plus del by del z. Okay, so if this, this is actually the divergence operator over here, just written in a different form. Okay, so, okay, del by del xj equals the divergence. Okay, this is the divergence. All right, so um, it's just written in another form. So what's the divergence of this? Okay, uh, we can, well, we can tackle the terms one at a time. So let's let's do a differentiation of, uh, we apply this derivative to both terms inside this, this tensor. Then we will get the following, del by del xj of del ui del xj, okay? So this, this two, you try to expand this out, okay? Try to expand this out will be like, like the following. Del by del xj of del ui del xj equals to second derivative of u, ui, second derivative with respect to y of ui, second derivative with respect to z of ui. And that's equals to the uh, nabla square of u. Sorry, this should not be a vector nabla square of u, if repeated over three directions, okay, okay, so the first one, we, okay, we do this, we do this first for i equals to 1. So we did that, okay, so we go step by step from this, we try and tackle the first term here first, we go through step by step, u1, uh, i equals to 1. So it's ui, ui, ui. And then we repeat over three directions and then we get uh, we get this. Okay, let's say i equals to 1 first. We put this here. Okay, then we get this. Repeat this over three directions. We'll just generalize it as ui. And then we'll get the nabla square of ui, nabla, uh, rather, del by del x square of ui, del 2y, uh, del 2 by del y square of ui, del 2 by del z, del 2 ui by del z square of also ui. So this is just repeating this process over three directions, and then you'll get this. Okay, I should put like that. Um, okay, so this, this kind of makes sense of this first term. 
and that's where you get this divergence term from. And what about this second term? Now I'm going to use a shortcut over here. Okay, so del by del xj of del uj del xi equals the following. Okay, so uh, just think of it like that. Okay. So you see, uh, you see, if we, we apply this partial derivative rule, it allows us to switch the order in which we kind of differentiate things. Okay, it allows us to switch the order in by which we differentiate things. And you can have a del uj, del xj on the inside, del by del xi on the outside. So basically, you would have this repeated along three directions in three vector directions okay and what you have inside is del uj del, del xj and if you expand this out per equation you'll just get this this thing over here which is the divergence of the vector u and this if you look at the continuity equation that will just give you zero okay but uh, i didn't prove i didn't prove this part. I didn't prove this part yet. Uh, hopefully you just believe me or uh, what I can do is just uh, kind of expand these terms out to see what uh, what you can do. So let's consider i equals to 1 i equals to 1 so what you do is partial by partial x all right of partial u partial x plus partial v partial or rather let's do it this way sorry we'll just have the following because we only have one index here this is just a summation partial by partial x partial u x partial x plus partial by partial y partial u y partial x plus partial by partial z partial u z partial x all right so this is just expanding expanding this term in the i equals 1. That means in the x equation, it will be like so. All right. Now that you have this, we can, of course, switch the derivatives. And then we will have partial by partial x of blah, blah, u. Okay. So... We, we see that we can actually just switch around the equations like so. This is my proof of it, so to speak. Partial by partial x of partial u j partial x j. So you see this uh, switching around of derivatives that actually works. Okay, that actually works for this uh, Einstein notation or tensor notation as well. Repeat three times across the x, y, and z direction, you're generally okay. So usually this term disappears because um, del of u equals to zero. Now, thus, we don't really need to bother too much about it. But uh, in general, for income, yeah, so this is a result of incompressible flows because these terms are usually zero. So normally, we just uh, have these terms. We just want to be clear on what these terms are, especially this part can be very confusing. We usually just transform these terms into this term, and that's why you have a nabla square of u. Okay, we, we have it like so. 
we actually get rid of this term because it just transforms into this this term I, I described here and the divergence of u equals to zero this is actually the divergence of u so that can just be kind of gotten rid of and it becomes like this that's why this term actually corresponds to this term but that's just a reminder on the incompressible part so in case you see uh, this difference in notations in the Navier-Stokes equations hopefully this video helps to clarify some of that and now um, the thing is that we want to be very careful about just cancelling terms off like that right because now we have filtering if we just keep cancelling terms like that like reducing this expression into this expression here well we may actually uh, wind up eliminating eliminating some of the Reynolds stresses or subgrid stresses Okay, so the correct way is to instead leave it as it is and filter first and see whether we can you know, get rid of them. That's why we want to leave it in its more so-called pristine state without cancelling cancelling out all the all of uh, these terms first, all of these terms, because uh, you might actually uh, cancel out some important terms that uh, are still around after you filter. So now, now we have, uh, we are more clear on what these terms are. We can then start doing that. Uh, we can then start to begin our actual filtering. Okay. So remember how we describe our general filter in one D. Okay. Uh, you will have something like this. U X the filtered velocity, or filtered yeah, filtered velocity. I should change this to U. The filter velocity equals to u x prime uh, times g x minus x prime uh, times d x prime. I already explained what this means uh, physically, so I'm not going to go through it again. So I'm going to stop here. In the next video, we're going to continue this discussion on filtering. And yeah, this is just more preliminaries. Uh, so you have to uh, continue on to the next video to find the find the actual filtering process so it's going to be a little bit long but just bear with me we're going to go through it okay so thanks for watching i'll see you guys again bye bye